may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. We'd like to call Gwyneth Paltrow. Thank you. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in the case now before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Good afternoon. I've been inside all day. I have no idea. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Could you state your name and spell it for the record, please? Yes, my legal name is Gwyneth Kate Paltrow Falchuk. That's G W Y N E T H K A T E P A L T R O W F A L C H U K. Great, thank you. May I call you Miss Paltrow? Sure. Okay, fantastic. As you've seen the last few days, we always have the witnesses give background information, tell about yourself, etc. I have a feeling that everybody in the courtroom knows who you are, so we're not going to go through all the background. We're just going to kind of cut to the chase. Is that fair? Sounds fine. All right, wonderful. Let's just talk about skiing. My understanding is that you are pretty much an intermediate type skier. I would characterize myself as intermediate. Okay. You've been skiing since you were a child. I have. Okay. Um, do you do black diamonds, blues, greens? I'm not really a skier, so you've got to kind of help me out with this. I prefer to do more blues than blacks. Okay. And blue is intermediate, right? Under black? Yes. Okay. And the bandana run where this accident occurred, it was a green run? Yes, to All my right. recollection. Fantastic. So as an intermediate skier, would you say that you skied enough to at least be familiar with the rules of skiing? I think so, yes. All right, and what are those rules? I think, you know, use common sense, ski safely, be aware of other skiers around you. Okay. What about skiing in control? Is that something that you need to do? Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, you have to give the right of way to those who are downhill. Yes. Okay. Um, you also have certain responsibilities if you're in a collision, is that fair? Yes, which I learned more about post the collision. I bet. <laughs> You've probably been hit over the head after, with all of that information <laughs> since the time, right? Indeed. Okay. Um, so let's talk about those things. Did you know the rules at the time of the collision that if you're in a collision with someone, you need to give your name and information, contact information? So because I was hit by Mr. Sanderson and he was at fault, I assumed that Eric, who was our ski instructor who was there at the time, who was overseeing the event, he said, I'm going to leave all of your information. And he said, you should go ski down because my kids were waiting for me. And, and I appreciate that. But my question was, did you know of the rule of skiing if you are in a collision that you need to share that information? Your Honor, this is your Overruled. I overruled. Go ahead. Can you repeat the question? Absolutely. At the time of the collision, were you aware of the rule that if you're in a collision, you need to share your name, your contact information with the person that you're involved in a collision with? I don't think I was aware of the rule. Okay. Were you aware that there is kind of a rule of common decency to do that? I would not have left the scene without leaving my information, and my information was left. Did you provide that information? No, Eric Christensen, who was the ski instructor with us, said he would leave all the information. You don't know if he did or did not, though, do, do you? You weren't there when he did. Well, subsequently, I know that he did. I, I'm not asking that. I'm asking when you were there at the collision, you didn't ensure that it was given. You weren't there when it was given. I was not there when it was given. All right. And it's also, I think you even admitted in your deposition that it's the rule of common decency to make sure that everybody's okay, exchange information, and to follow those skiing rules. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's talk about that day after I get a drink. Okay. I'll have one as well. Do you have water? 
I do. Thank okay, you. Great. So I just want to kind of set the stage. Um, you're skiing that day. My understanding, it was a nice conditions, beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Is yes. That a yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and Deer Valley, we know that Deer Valley is always immaculately groomed. Good conditions on the slopes. Good conditions. All right. You were skiing that day with your daughter, Apple, correct? Yes. Moses. Mm -hmm. My son. And um, Brad Falchuk, who was your boyfriend at the time, now current husband. Correct. All right. And his two children. That's right. All right. And his kids were the same approximate age as yours on the day of the ski collision. They all remain the same age. <laughs> That's a As very, each other. very good point. More like the, the Brady Bunch. The girls are the same age, boys are the same age. All right. And back then, it was 12 and 9? 11 and 9. 11 and 9. All right. Fantastic. And the day of the collision, I think you um, had been to Deer Valley twice prior to that time? I believe time? so. Okay. And this was the first day of your ski trip? I think that's correct. Okay. Um, and I don't know how many days you were there, but I know at least from what you've told us that after that first day, um, you also skied the next day. Yes. Okay. So when Mr. Sanderson was at home, you were skiing. I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. So the children, um, all four of them had lessons during that trip. That's right. Okay. Would you agree that those lessons were fairly expensive? They were. Okay. Do you remember about how much they were? Um, I would have to check. Whatever the Deer Valley rate is is what we paid. Okay. I, if Let me know if this is about right, at least from what I saw in your deposition. The total bill was around $8,980. Does that sound about right for four? I think that misstates the evidence. I think that was for both families. But for for four, four kids. I, I would honestly have to check. Okay, all right. Do you, that's, that's fine. But it's very expensive. Very expensive. Very. Right, and then tips on top of that. Yes. Okay, and I'm assuming, and you're under oath here, <laughs> that you're a good tipper. Yes. Okay, fantastic. I wouldn't expect anything less. Um, all right, so let's talk about your daughter, Apple. She was 11. She was. Okay, and her instructor was Carrie Oaks. That's correct. All right, and um, Apple at the time was a good beginner. Yes. Okay, and your son Moses, he was nine at the time. Yes. And he was more so of a real beginner. Yes. All right, and his instructor was Eric Christensen. Correct. Okay, and I think both Carrie Oaks and Eric are coming next week. I believe so. All right, fantastic. So. Three days ago, um, can you believe it's been only three days? No. <laughs> Me neither. So three days ago, uh, Mr. Owens, um, in his opening, talked about risky behavior, risky skiing. Mm -hmm. And he made mention that, you know, of course, Ms. Paltrow was not skiing um, recklessly, not taking any kind of risky behavior because her children were there that day. Do you recall him saying that? I think it does misstate my testimony, but... Well, it wasn't testimony that you stated. My, my uh, argument... Can you answer the question? Let's if see. I remember what he said? No, just maybe do you agree with that? That on that day of the collision, you were not engaging any, in any kind of risky behavior, especially Correct. because your kids were there. I was not engaging in any risky behavior. Okay, but also, and I think your counsel made mention of this in opening that especially because your children were there. I don't recall him saying that. All right. Well, did your children being there um, make it so that you especially would not engage in risky behavior? I, I didn't engage in risky behavior. I, I wouldn't with my children there or without my children there. Okay. And kind of in life. I mean, I'm a mom, right? I've got a couple kids, um, actually about your age, one of them, not your age, your, your daughter's age. Sorry, I'm not that old. Um, 
when my kids are around, I kind of behave myself a little bit better, especially when they were younger, mm -hmm. than on average. Would you agree with that? I, I've always been very open and honest with my kids, mm -hmm. and um, some I, I think, you know, they know me very well. Mm -hmm. Right. And would you agree that you have engaged in risky behavior with your children present? Your Honor, may we approach? Sure. We're all back. Thank you. Um, so the, the objection is sustained, and the jury should disregard the question. All right, let's go back to the day of the accident. Okay. So <clears throat> you're on bandana, correct? It's a green run. Um, <clears throat> it's true you were relatively familiar with that run, correct? Yes, my children especially like that run. Okay. And the accident happened at, towards the beginning of the run. Is that accurate? Not at the top, but... Sure, but yeah. not at the bottom. Correct. All right. Um, and it sounds like from what I have heard and re reviewed, um, you had done about four to five runs that day, and you and kind of the group were going to go get some lunch with everyone. Correct. All right. So let's talk about as you're skiing down, mm -hmm. Apple, we've, we've talked about she was 11, Moses was nine. Mm -hmm. Did your children, when they were skiing, or doing anything that kids do, like to ask you to watch them? When they were very little, I remember, you know, watch me jump in the pool and, and things like that when they were more like four or five years old, that sort of age. Okay. So when Moses was nine, he didn't say, Mommy, Mommy, watch me, or Mom, I don't know what he called you, but Mama, 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 watch me, watch me do things. Not that I recall on that day. Okay. Do you remember testifying that on that day, that's exactly what did happen? I don't remember. All right, and uh, I'll show you your deposition in sure. just a second. So in fact, during, you remember the deposition, right? Yes. It was actually during 2020, it was during COVID. Yes. So it was via Zoom. We've never actually met in person, it was kind of on the video. Mm -hmm. um, and you were asked a question a number of times, you know, were you, was, were your children um, asking you to watch them? And, and you said no. I think you- I don't remember them saying, okay. watch me on that day. Okay. Well, do you remember that in that deposition, then we played you parts of Carrie Oaks's deposition? So your honor, this is improper impeachment. I mean, what's the question that's being contested? We're just kind of going through the, the history here. Not through the deposition. Uh, Let's I'll, hear. Allow, I'll allow a few questions. I think counsel was referring to what was going on during depositions, but yes. uh, please get quickly to the Absol question. Absolutely. Do you remember during your deposition being played just a portion of um, Apple's instructor, Carrie Oaks, her deposition, wherein she said that, yes, Moses was saying, mommy, mommy, watch me. That she was saying, uh, I, I don't remember, that she that, that while they were skiing they were saying that? Yeah. I, do, I don't remember that, no. All right, okay. And so you don't remember then changing your testimony in your deposition, admitting that that is what happened? I, I, I'm, I'm sure if Carrie Oak said, I'm saying, I don't remember him saying, watch me, watch me. Okay. May I approach your honor? You may. I'm going to need my reading glasses, unfortunately. Sorry about that. I don't think there's an, uh, a contradiction here, Your Honor. She said uh, she doesn't recall that Carrie Oaks said something. So I don't, I don't know why we can't just move forward. O overruled. Go ahead. Thank you. Could you turn... Page 122 of your deposition. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to read the question that was given by Mr. Sykes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to know it's Mr. Sykes who asked the question when I read it. Then I'm going to have you answer. Um, now, Ms. Paltrow, 
And this is, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm starting on line four. Okay. Okay. Now, Ms. Paltrow, isn't it true? Isn't it true? I'm just a country lawyer here. Okay. Isn't it true that your kids wanted to watch you ski? Or pardon me, that the, the kids wanted you to watch them ski. Isn't that true? And your, your counsel, he objected. How did you answer that question? What? Let's read the objection, Your Honor, if we're going to do this. The objection was vague as to time. Is the, uh, do you want me to rule on the objection? I mean, what, uh, if we're going to read it, then we should read the objection. Okay, read it. Yes. The, the objection said vague as to time. Yes. Yes. And then how did you respond? I said, I can still watch my children ski and be skied directly into my back by someone. And then you continued. Which is what happened. Exactly. So you were watching your children when you alleged that you were skied directly into your back by someone. My daughter was down the hill. My son was to my left. So I was skiing. My eyes were not fixated only on my son okay. when Mr. Sanderson skied directly into my back. Okay. And so when Miss Oaks, who's going to testify next week, said that your son Moses was saying, Mommy, Mommy, watch me. That's who you were watching, right? That's Vegas to time, Your Honor. Overruled. Right, right, be, right. Minute, yes. Overruled. Go ahead. Thank you. Sorry. What was the question? Yeah. When when Moses is saying, "Mommy, mommy, watch me," mm -hmm. that's who you were looking at when you were direct when when you were skied directly into your back. I do not recall Moses saying, "Mommy, mommy, watch me" on the ski slope. Okay. Well, Apple was down further, right? Yes. She didn't see it? No. Okay. And Moses, he was the one, at least according to Carrie Oaks, was calling your attention. Okay. Okay. Um, Nine-year-old, did he want more attention to have somebody watch them rather than 11? Not necessarily. Okay. Moses was skiing above you, though, right? He hadn't gotten down as far as you. He was on my left. And up. I was on the right. He was, oops, sorry. He was on the left side of the slope. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I believe kind of a little bit uphill. Okay. And that's where your attention was when you were hit allegedly in the back. I don't know where my attention was the moment I was struck in the back. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, that's what you said, which is what happened. He struck me in the back. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Okay, I know, but you said I can still watch my children ski. Yes, and meaning directly it, into my back by someone, which is what happened. Yes, exactly. What's the, what's the pending question? It sounds like they're saying the exact same thing. What's the question? The question is, you were watching your children ski when you were struck in the back. So that's I, asked and answered, Your Honor. Overruled. I was skiing and looking downhill as you do, and I was skied directly into by Mr. Sanderson. Okay. And your nine-year-old son, you will admit, was on your left and up a bit. To my recollection. Okay. All right. And Carrie Oaks is the one who says that he was the one calling your attention. You'll have to speak to Miss Oaks. We will. All right. So. I want to go through the accident a bit. Um, because we did this over video, mm -hmm. we didn't really get to act it out a whole heck of a lot. But I, I want to just kind of talk with you first um, and, and see if this is your recollection of, of how it happened. Your Honor, I, I think this is improper. She should just ask her what happened and if she testified contrary to that earlier, then she uh, cross-examines her with the deposition. And what's the objection? Uh, improper use of deposition testimony. It's a party under Rule 32. It can be used for any purpose. You okay. may proceed. Thank you. You were going along relatively slowly. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to kind of ask you a couple sure. questions. So let me know if anything I say is, is not accurate. Okay. Okay. So um, you're going down relatively slowly. 
when all of a sudden you heard a strange rustling noise behind you. Yes. Okay. And you felt like a rush of air in a strange way. Yes. Okay. And two skis slid in between my skis. That's correct. And all of a sudden there was a body from the whole front of a body pressing into my back. That's right. Okay. Like, we'll talk about this in a minute. And there was a man behind me pressing into me. How did you know it was a man? Because he was making some strange noises that sounded male. And he was large. So I assumed it was a male. Okay, he was large? I felt all my back okay. pressing. Okay. Um, all right, there was a man pressing behind me, pressing into me. Mm -hmm. I was extremely upset. Well, I was confused at first, and I didn't know what, exactly what was happening. It's a very strange thing to happen on a ski slope. Um, and I, I, I agree. I, and I froze, and it, I would say I was, got very upset a couple seconds later. Okay. Let me just continue on here. I just want to make sure that I got this all right. I didn't know if it was an intentional assault of a sexual nature. Right. Okay. Um, was he grinding and thrusting or something or just the noises? What's, what, what made you think it was a, an, a sexual assault? So that was a quick thought that went through my head when I was trying to reconcile what was happening. I was skiing and two skis came between my skis forcing my legs apart and then there was a body pressing against me and there was a very strange grunting noise so my brain was trying to make sense of what was happening i thought am i is this a practical joke is someone like doing something perverted this is really really strange my mind was going very very quickly and i was trying to ascertain what was happening okay um, I think you said, I didn't know if it was an accident, but he was groaning and grunting in a very disturbing way. Yes, there was a sort of groan coming out of his mouth. Okay. Then you said, I froze. Yes. We kept skiing. Right. We went to the right. Yes. We came crashing down together. That's right. Okay. You said, this man was behind me on the mountain. My knee and our skis will, were still sort of tangled up. Mm-hmm. Is that yes? Yes, sorry. Okay. Our bodies were almost spooning, and I moved away quickly. Yes. And, I knee and my knee splayed open, and I was completely in shock. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop there. Okay. And if the court and Ms. Paltrow, if you don't mind, since, again, when we did this over Zoom, would you mind stepping down and us kind of acting this out a little bit so I could get a good feel? Let's see. Can we approach her on her? Sure. Yeah, the objection was sustained as requested, but um, you know, you're welcome to move around the courtroom. Wonderful, thank you. Do you have a microphone? Yes. Testing. Okay, Ms. Paltrow, so your, your counsel doesn't want you to come down, so I'm not going to ask you to come uh, down. That's inappropriate. The judge uh, sustained the objection. So she shouldn't comment on, on what I want. It's what the judge wants. The, the objection was sustained. I am going to try and be both you and Mr. Sanderson at the same time. Let's Fair. have Bob. Bob can be. Your Honor, let's have Mr. Sanderson. He's here. Let's no, have him I, come. I don't want to, I'm, we're not going to reenact what happened. I think you can ask questions. And if, yes. if you want to stand and move around in order to Perfect. help you with those questions, you can do that. But that's as far as we're going to go. That's, that's not a problem at all. All right. So since you're not down here, mm -hmm. um, may I ask how tall you are? I'm just under 5'10". Okay, I am so jealous. I think I'm shrinking, though. You and me both. I have to wear four-inch heels just to make it to 5'5". Five five, well, so. They're very nice. Well, thank you. So, all right. So, as of right now, I'm Gwyneth Paltrow. Okay. Okay. I'm skiing down. Can you tell me with my legs? I don't know. Again, I'm not much of a skier. Are you snow plowing? Are you parallel? Kind of orient my legs, first of all. Sorry. I can do this, I can do this. Not, not snow plowing, just okay. skis. 
All right. It's hard for me to see what you're where you're standing. May may she come down just to to see? You can you can. Is, is that okay? Where you can see better. You can walk further forward, Miss Van. Oh, Hall. sure. Great. No problem. All right. So. The jury, you can go ahead and stand or move wherever you feel you need to to see what's going on here. All right. So, are my feet oriented correctly? Yes. Go ahead and tell me how to move them. I think, you know, skiing down, going to the right. Okay. So, okay, about. Probably a little bit further apart. Okay. About like that. And then two skis slide slowly between my skis. All right. So, my feet are about. What, a foot apart, would you say, 18 inches? Probably. Okay, and you believe that two skis slid right between? That is correct. Okay, and so all of a sudden you see these two skis coming in between your yes. legs. I would have freaked out too. And I did. Okay, so so the skis are coming. How, how far did the skis get in between your legs before you guys fell? His body pressed up into my back. Okay. So I f froze. I don't know exactly how far the skis would have come through. Okay. Because then I noticed his body pressing against my back. Okay. And then it was probably a few good seconds, and then we fell to the right. Somebody must have caught an edge. Okay. So when you guys are, when you froze and you're, skiing together. I think you said at one point you it was like you were spooning. Well, when we fell down, we fell. I fell on his body. He fell on the ground. And so it was kind of like a spoon on the ground. Okay, so... I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Okay. Um, well, now that Mr. Sanderson is here, and I don't need you to do anything, Terry, but um, just for comparison's sake, I'm in my heels. We're about the same height, about 5'5", five five with heels. It's hard, roughly. Oh, tell me I'm taller, please. <laughs> okay, so, so, so you, we've got Mr. Sanderson that's about 5'5", five five that comes in back of you, and you mm -hmm. said that you felt something huge. What was your word no, behind you? No, just a big. A big. Body. A big body, all mm -hmm. right. And was it just the front of his body that touched the back of your body? I couldn't see in the back of my head. Sure. But I felt a body right. press against my back. But there was no grabbing, like nobody, like he didn't like grab your waist or grab your No, arms, not at all. No. Nothing like that. Nothing. Okay. All right. So, ski slide between, you kind of freeze, you, sp you end up maybe your skis kind of cross, you end up going down. Would you agree that Mr. Sanderson fell to the ground and then you fell on top? I don't know if it was simultaneous. I don't remember. Okay. But you didn't fall and hit the ground, correct? I don't remember exactly where I hit, Okay. but I fell over All right. And with Mr. Sanderson. Right, and Mr. Sanderson fell and hit the ground. Yes. All right, so going back here, um, you guys are on the ground. Now, you, you realize, right, you're, and you're not saying to the jury that this was in any way, shape, or form a sexual assault. I am not saying that. Okay. I'm just saying what went through my mind for a split second when it was happening. All right, great. So you're down on the ground, and then you started yelling at him. I I don't remember if I started yelling at him while I was on the ground. I remember pushing away because I was very upset and it was still very strange to me what had happened. Um, and I pushed down the hill and I turned around and I said, and I yelled at him. Okay. Did you scream before you went down? I don't think so. Okay. 
So if others heard a scream, you wouldn't, that wasn't you. No, I froze when he slid between my skis, I absolutely froze. And I don't remember yelling or screaming until I was very angry at what had happened. Okay. And so you guys are on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then you said to him, I think you don't know if you were up or if you were still on the ground, but he was still on the ground, right? Yes. When you said, what are you doing? Yes. Okay. Like, why did you do that? Yes. And he said, I think you skied into me. Yes. And that's when you were furious and said, you skied directly into my effing back at Sorry. the top of your lungs. Yes, I did. Okay. I apologize for my bad language. And Well, in fact, you were screaming that so hard, you were worried that Moses was hearing you. Yes. Okay. Um, and after you were screaming to him, isn't that when Mr. Sanderson said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry? He said, I said, you skied directly into my effing back. And he said, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Right. And that was you screaming at him while he's on the ground still, right? I was yelling at him. Pretty loud, pretty I was, forceful. I was pretty upset. Right. You're yeah. small but mighty. Actually, you're not that small. Um, so when he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. would you agree that he kind of mumbled it? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and then you remember Eric came over, Eric Christensen. Yes. Who was Moses's instructor. Correct. Okay. And um, that was when you were concerned that, oh, gosh, Moses is close by. He's hearing me yell obs obscenities at this man. Which is not my custom. Right, and I think you said that. And at some point, the man stood up, and we were all sort of talking. Yes. What conversation did you have with Mr. Sanderson standing up? I wasn't having a conversation with him. Eric was helping him up and asking if he was okay. Okay. Eric eventually yanked him up, right? He pulled him up. He helped him up. Okay, he didn't get up on his own accord. He helped him. And were you still standing right there when he helped him? I believe I was, yes. Are you sure you hadn't skied down a little bit? I might have skied down a little bit. My son was down a little bit, and my now husband came over at some point. Okay. Um, so I, and I remember moving away from Mr. Sanderson after he collided into me and we hit the ground. Okay. And do you remember... Um, we heard from Craig Ramon. He was the first individual who testified. Do you remember him coming to the scene? I do not. You don't remember him at all? No. You don't remember him being there or asking you, are you okay? I do not. Okay. You don't remember him asking Terry if he was okay? I don't recall. Okay. All right. And then... I think what you've said is Eric told you, I'm going to handle this. Um, and that's what I think you've said people do. They handle things for you. I don't believe I said that. You've never said that? I believe what I said was in the acting world, that's a world of representatives. So you have an agent who represents you. And so if they say, you know, I'm going to provide information, you allow somebody to represent you. So when Eric, as an accredited Deer Valley ski instructor said to me, I'll fill out the paperwork. He knew also that my daughter was at the bottom waiting for me to come for lunch or at the lunch place. Okay. And so Mr. Christensen handled it for you? Mr. Christensen stayed and filled out the report, made sure Mr. Sanderson was okay, and said to me, you can go ahead. Okay. How, how do you know that if you weren't there? Because he told me. Okay. That's what he told you? Yes. But you weren't there to see it. He told you you can leave. He wasn't there. Objection I object to the form. Yeah. I don't S understand sustain. the question. Sustain. Go ahead with your questions. You weren't there when the paperwork or the exchange of information was given. Fair? Fair. All right. And um, would you agree that Mr. Christensen did not see the incident, didn't see the collision? Correct. Okay. He just uh, saw us right afterwards. Right. But, and in fact, nobody from Deer Valley has seen, saw the collision. 
Correct. Your kids didn't see the collision. That's right. Okay. Um, the only person that, and you may not be aware of this, the only person who says that they saw the collision was Mr. Ramon. Yes. Okay. Do you, the way you answer that makes me think that you don't believe that he saw it. I did not believe his testimony. Do you believe that he saw the collision? No. I don't believe that he saw what he thinks he saw. Ms. Paltrow, why would he lie? This so is a man... Is a motive, Your Honor? But, uh, perhaps that's not the right objection under the rules, so let me be quiet and withdraw my objection. Can you answer it? He said he was at 40 feet away and colorblind. I don't know how he can be positive about what he saw, especially with how much he changed his story. Well, what does colorblind have to do with anything? My husband's colorblind. We tease him all the time that he can't tell red or green. Um, but what does that have to do with not seeing who hit who? Well, if you have two people in ski gear mm -hmm. with helmets on and you're 40 plus feet away, I'm not sure how you can discern who is who. Okay. Well, and I can tell you that he didn't because Mr. Sanderson categorically hit me on that ski slope, and that is the truth. And, and I'm sure that that's what you believe. I'm not saying Because that. it's the truth. I, I'm not saying that. Um, Let's get a question. So you and Mr. Sanderson, if you're almost 5'10", Terry's 5'5", five five, pushing it. Your Honor, that's facts, not in evidence. Counsel, you'll have an opportunity to redirect or to direct examine so go ahead. if, if you two stood next to each other do you think that somebody would confuse the two of you I, I don't know I'm telling you what happened okay all right so you're screaming at Terry worried that Moses hears you you admit that you were shaken up Yes. Okay. Um, you don't recall Mr. Ramon being there? I do not. Or asking you if you were okay? I do not. Do you, did anybody ask you if you were okay? I remember Eric Christensen asking me if I was okay and Brad, my now husband, asking me if I was okay. Okay. And when you talked to Brad, he was down further, right? Yes. Down with Moses. So none of that took place where my client was. He came over to me after the fall. Okay. And I just want to make sure you don't have any kind of medical training. No. Okay. You don't know what injuries Mr. Sanderson did or did not sustain in, in the accident? I do not. Okay. Are you aware now that you've sat here the last three days that he did sustain four broken ribs? Yes. Okay. Aware that he sustained a concussion? Yes. Um, are you aware that he had to be taken down on a toboggan? So we should be clear, like, does she know as a result of this testimony or does she know personally? Would you clarify your question? Yeah, sure. Um, how, how did you learn that he broke four ribs? Through all of this. Okay. And, and to make it clear, I don't want to find out anything that your lawyers told you. That's attorney-client privilege. We can't. So anytime mm -hmm. I'm asking you, I don't want you to tell me what your lawyers have, have told you. Okay. Um, through the court proceedings, is that fair? That's fair. All right. You learned that Mr. Standerson broke four ribs. Yes. Okay. And that he sustained a concussion. Correct. Okay. That he went was taken down on toboggan. Yes. Did you learn of that that day? No. Did you inquire? What is your name again? Sorry. Kristen? Yes. Sorry, I was going to say, Kristen, it's all right. I think you have to keep in mind when you're the victim of a crash, right, your psychology is not necessarily thinking about the person who perpetrated it. Okay. So the answer to my question is no, no you did not inquire. I did not. Okay. Did you ever um, ask, hey, how was that guy that ran into the back of me? Is he okay? Did you ever ask anybody from Deer Valley about that? I did not, because at the time, I did not know that he had sustained injuries like that. I thought it was very minor on the day. 
And you didn't stick around long enough to find that out. I stuck around long enough for him to say he was okay, to stand up, that he told Mr. Christensen he was okay. And when he, when he was helped up by Mr. Christensen, um, again, you weren't right there. You were down a ways. Just a few feet down, yes. Okay. Could you tell if Mr. Sanderson was still dazed or unsteady on his feet? I, I could not. I don't know. Okay. And again, you didn't leave your name, address, contact information. You didn't fill out any paperwork in connection with this accident. Eric did on my behalf. Right, but I'm asking about you personally. Well, it has been asked and answered. Sustained. Okay. After the incident, you skied down, went to lunch, and then my understanding is you got a massage. So after the accident, I met all the rest of the kids at lunch. We all gathered. We had lunch. And I still felt very shaky, and my knee was bothering me, my back was bothering me, so I decided to go in early and get a massage. Okay. Um, you never did seek any kind of medical treatment for your knee or your back? No. Okay. Um, now, at the scene, before you skied down and, and had lunch, um, there was no indication that Mr. Sanderson knew who you were. Is that fair? I don't know. Okay. I think, well, you testified there was no indication of that. You were wearing goggles, a helmet. Yes. Okay, kind of looked like everybody else on the slope. That's always my intention. Okay. Probably had a better ski outfit, though, I bet. <laughs> I still have the same one. <laughs> I just have one. Okay. So nobody on the hill would be able to recognize you. Is that fair? Maybe your family I have and been, friends. I have been recognized on ski slopes before. Okay. Do you recall testifying in your deposition that no one in the hi on the hill would be able to recognize me? That would be the idea. Okay. But sometimes paparazzi has a way of figuring it out, is my point. Okay. Um, so your testimony to the jury here today is Mr. Sanderson skied into you. That is correct. All right. Um, Craig Ramon, you said he's not telling the truth or you don't believe him. I don't... I, I'm telling you that what he said is not what happened. Okay. So, in other words, if somebody says something that's not what happened, they're lying? He is not telling the truth. All right. I don't know if he knows he's lying, but I'm telling you what he said is unfortunately not the truth. All right. Well, in addition to Mr. Ramon, you've sat here when some of the experts have testified. Mm -hmm. We had um, Dr. Gibby... And we heard uh, Dr. Baim, I always want to say Baum or Baum, yes. Baim. Mm -hmm. You've heard their testimony that the only way that Mr. Sanderson's ribs could have been broken where they were is that if he was hit from behind. You disagree with that? I think it misstates their testimony. I guess I'm not sure what the objection is, but it's overruled. The jury will have to remember what the testimony was. That means you get to answer. You, you disagree with their testimony? Absolutely, I disagree. Okay. Um, what medical training do you have to disagree with that? I'm just telling you the truth of what actually happened. Okay. That's uh, all I can do. All right. And you don't have any other witnesses who saw it to uh, support your position, correct? Well, I have a lot of witnesses who saw the split seconds afterwards and the positions of the bodies on the mountain, which would indicate very clearly who hit who. Okay. Do you have any witnesses who saw it? Who saw the, the collision? The collision. No. All right. And you're not trained in accident reconstruction? Me? Yeah. No. Neither am I. All right. Um... So, Ms. Paltrow, isn't it true that this was an accident that you caused? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, would you agree that you are accident prone? So, Your Honor, can we have a, a bench meeting on this? Why don't we take a recess now?
Mr. Owens? Yes, I think the jury's coming. Okay, you can bring them in. Ms. Van Orman, you may proceed. Yes, thank you. So, Ms. Paltrow, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about kind of this was where my whole objection was sustained. Um, I'm okay. sure it was on the record whenever it was there. I, I don't, I don't recall. Okay, I, I think we just said that now would be a good time for a bench uh, meeting, uh, but the objection was sustained. <clears throat> okay, I. Moving on, shifting gears. So, uh, Ms. Paltrow, the, the reason I got involved in this case in the first place was your counterclaim. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk with you about the counterclaim. Um, is it true that you feel it's unfair that Mr. Sanderson has brought this case against you? I do. Okay. And he has deterred you from enjoying the rest of what was a very expensive vacation? Well, I lost half a day of skiing. Uh-huh. Yes. Right. Okay. And um, I think that's that's what your counsel has argued as well, that you lost, a, you had a full day pass, but you can only ski a half a day. Yes, I went back down after lunch. Okay, right. And that's when you had lunch and you got a massage. Yes. Okay. Um, didn't get your knee checked out, didn't have any kind of medical attention. No, it didn't feel acute in any way. It felt just like I had overstretched my knee and I had sustained a blow, but it didn't feel like it needed medical attention. Okay. And you're bringing this claim for $1. I am. Okay. In fact, your counsel, Steve, do you still have that dollar bill? That yes, I'll you let you use your own. <laughs> I'm not going to even respond to that. <laughs> you, you, nah, I don't need it. Sure. Yeah, I don't need it. You saw Mr. Owens wave that one dollar around, right? I did. Okay. One dollar in symbolic damages. Is that accurate? It's an actual dollar that I'm asking for. Okay. But you also have testified when I asked you questions in your deposition yes. that that one dollar is symbolic. Do you remember me asking you it's about symbolic that? because the damages would actually be more. Okay. And, but remember me asking you, is it symbolic? And you said, yes, it is. Yes. Okay. And I asked you as well, well, you learned about that through Taylor Swift because she asked for $1 in symbolic damages, right? And I think I said at that point I had not been familiar with it, but I since am. Now you are. Yes. But at the time, a couple of years ago in 2020, you didn't know anything about Taylor Swift's $1 symbolic damage lawsuit? Counsel? Yeah, because I asked her about it at the time, and, and she, she denied it. Okay. Correct. Can you answer the question? I was not aware at the time. Okay. Are you good I, friends with Taylor Swift? No. Overruled? You're not good friends with Taylor Swift. I would not say we're good friends. We are friendly. I take my kids. I've taken my kids to one of her concerts before, but we don't talk very often. You've never given Miss Swift personal, um, intimate gifts for Christmas? Uh, Your Honor, uh, relevance, or I would like a relevance. bench trial? Well, she's just said that she wasn't friends with her, so I, I'm inquiring on that. Ask her about Oprah. I mean, Mr. Owens, uh, sustain. Please move on. You're telling the jury that you are here asking for $1. I am. That's not totally accurate, though, is it? What do you mean? Well, the jury isn't going to be deciding this, but you're also asking the judge 
to award you attorney's fees for over hundreds of thousands of dollars. Isn't that true? Your Honor, uh, the judge has made a ruling on this issue that it will be a separate event. Sustained as to relevance. The relevance is, Your Honor, that they have. If you want to argue the relevance, we should do it up here. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Objections overruled. Thank you. And I'll, I'll restate it because I know it's been a little while. So it's not true, Ms. Paltrow, that you are just asking for a dollar. You are also asking, and this is not for the jury to decide, but this is for the court to decide later. You're asking for your attorney's fees in this case, which could be quite substantial. Is that not true? So I'm yes, asking a yes for a no. dollar for me mm -hmm. and then reimbursement of attorney's fees, which is a separate thing. And that could be a substantial amount, correct? Potentially. Okay. And when your counsel got up waving that one dollar, don't you think that's a little bit of a mischaracterization? I have one more question on this issue, and this is now three. O overruled. Go ahead. Don't you think that that's... One dollar, that's a mischaracterization, isn't it? I took it as I would receive that one dollar, which is all I am asking for. Ms. Paltrow, isn't it true that you've misrepresented a number of things today to this jury? Absolutely not. No other questions. Mr. Owens. Uh, you've been here every minute of this jury trial, <laughs> true? True. And uh, you're intending to be here every minute uh, next week? I am. Uh, have you enjoyed yourself? I've learned a lot. Who hit who? Mr. Sanderson hit me. The comment was that uh, Mr. Sanderson doesn't take criticism well. Do you take criticism well? <laughs> In my profession, after all these years of being in the public eye, I think I take it relatively well. You keep sending me notes. <laughs> I didn't cause these damages. Right? That's absolutely correct. Do you feel some empathy for Mr. Sanderson and his declining brain you know I really do I feel very sorry for him it seems like he's had a very difficult life but I did not cause the accident so I cannot be at fault for anything that subsequently happened to him so his daughter got up and said he was cursing out her her daughter did you hear that I did hear that did you cause that I did not cause that. Did you give him brain injuries that were evident on his MRI in, 19, in 2006? I did not. All right, let's start on a happier note. <laughs> let's bring up that picture of you and Moses. And while that's coming up, did you personally take a selfie with you and your son? I take selfies with my kids all the time, yes. All right, and we're going to pull it up in just a minute. You know what picture I'm talking about. Did you yes. personally take that photo? I did. On the day at issue? I did, before, before the accident. Okay, and uh, it's hard to tell who the <laughs> nine-year-old is there. <laughs> Thank you. Are you on the right or left? I'm on the right. And Moses is on the left? Yes. And are you going up the ski lift? It looks like it. This is Defense 86. If we haven't moved for its admission, I would like to do so. No objection. Defendant's 86 is received. And um, I notice you have a helmet on there. I do. And goggles. Yes. Did you always that day while on the slopes? Yes. Mr. Ramon testified, for instance, you were not wearing a helmet or goggles or any face covering whatsoever. A true or it's not true? I think you can see the evidence that I was wearing a helmet and goggles. So answer my question, please. Sorry. Is it true or not true that at the time of the collision and in the aftermath, you were or were not wearing a helmet? I was. And goggles? Correct. 
Uh, do you, did you ski at all that day without a helmet? No. Is that for anonymity? Anonymity. Thanks for saying that. And also for safety or both or what? It's for safety primarily, but yes, I like to, when I'm skiing, try to keep a low profile. You were asked about, uh, well, let me let me back up even further. Okay. Uh, you told me you you help you learn to ski at Alta. <laughs> I did actually. Tell me a little about that. My father was um, he loved skiing, and he had learned later in life, um, and so he was determined for my brother and I to learn how to ski when we were young. Um, and he used to do these really sweet one-on-one ski trips with us where he would take us to various destinations, and Alta was one of them. And, uh, and then he died young, true? Unfortunately, and yes. Did, did you stop in his 50s? That's how I, I'm in my 50s. But uh, I'm in my you, 50s. Did it's you stop young. skiing for a while? I did. Um, I was pretty devastated by his death and just being in the ski resort and on a chairlift it was um, it was difficult for me so I avoided it for a few years until I had my own kids and then I heard his voice in my head thinking I should teach them how to ski and uh, Brad Falchuk you were dating him at the time yes and now married to him yes were you skiing with the cold play guy a cold <laughs> according to Mar- Ramon? No, he, no. Who's the gold, cold play guy? The cold play guy, I believe, is he's referring to my first husband, Chris Martin. He's the singer and he's a guitar player and a piano player in the band Coldplay. Thank you. And uh, did this uh, kind of blending of the family's trip have some significance to you? Yes, this was. Um, this was a significant trip for us. It was the first time Brad and I were introducing our kids and doing something um, together as to see if we could blend families. Uh, there's an implication that at the time of this collision, you were distracted. Were you distracted? No. Were you paying attention to where you were skiing? I was. Was there anyone in front of you? There was not. There's an implication that uh, somehow you're looking at Moses up the hill to the left uh, while you're skiing downhill. Were you doing that? I was not. Uh, Carrie Oaks of Deer Valley does say something in her deposition about uh, the kids want wanting you to see them or mm-hmm. something. Uh, were you, in fact... Uh, like, did you all meet at the top of the hill? I think we were, so we were six in our group plus our ski instructors, so we would always meet that day at the top of the chair and kind of plot out where everyone was going. Great. Um, okay, the six people, let's just make sure we know who they Myself, are. Myself, Brad, my stepdaughter, Isabella, my daughter, Apple, my son, Moses, and my stepson, Brody. Okay. And then uh, you had paid for each of the four kids to have their own individual instructors? They were all very different levels, so Brad paid for his kids and I paid for mine. All right. Uh, The one dollar that I'll probably waive in closing, (laughs) but not this minute. Um, Mm -hmm. were Were you planning to ski the whole day? I was. And did you send a little text uh, after lunch? Yes. Can you bring this up? And I'm going to take the four. Have it been admitted? So D, good question. D110 is the text. Any objection? No objection. Exhibit 110 for de- or defendants is received. So these are kind of hard to see, and James is going to bring it up. Better copy, I guess. 
So, Gwenna, do you have the, a defense binder there? I just have my deposition. Yes. And so, uh, let's give her ours. I'm going to hand you this binder. Can we move to admit 83B? No objection. Defense Exhibit 83B is received. It's a little hard to see. Okay. And James, could you blow up the last sort of, yes. I think we need to go back just a little more to put a date on it. Do you recall I asked you, hey, did you text anyone that day? Do you remember this? Yes. And this is your own personal cell phone copy? Yes, it is. Okay, and there's a date. Sorry, it's a bad copy. February 24, <laughs> sorry. February 26, 2016. Is that is that, in fact, a true and correct copy of your phone screen? Yes. And who were you texting with, do you recall? Eric Christensen, the ski instructor. All right, so we went down Bandana. So you'd already been down that very, uh, oh, my board. I'm going to get my board in case this is better copy. Um, all right. Uh, okay, cool. Which one's you on the right or left? Do you know? The green? I'm Eric is the green and I'm the, the white. Okay, cool. We, sh we should take north side up, question mark. That's you? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go back out. And in the afternoon, let's go with the... Okay, let's keep going down. Oh, let's go ruby left. So you're coordinating a little bit? Yes on the mountain in real time, correct? Yes. And then, uh, sorry James, I'm testing you out here. Moses wants to know if you are still skiing and where. All right, so it's 2.29, mm -hmm. and this is, no one's thinking lawsuit yet, right? No. And that's you on the left with the G, and yes. it says, can you read it? It says, I came in, that guy sort of hurt me. I'm gonna get a massage at three. Gigi is here if he wants to come. Okay. Gigi was helping with the kids? Yeah, Gigi was our babysitter. All right. Did you go in earlier because you had been hit? I did, yes. Did you personally pay for a ski pass at Deer Valley? I did. And was it a full day pass? It was. And was it... Uh, is the monetary difference between the full day pass and the half day pass more than one dollar? It is. Ms. Van Orman kept saying when you were allegedly hit. Were you hit? I was hit. The definition of a, an assault is an unauthorized touching. Yes. Did did Mr. Sanderson touch you yes. in an unauthorized manner? Yes, you may we approach? You may. And you should uh, disregard the question. Did he touch you uh, without your permission? He did. The sexual part, by the way, that's just for a split second. You're thinking, what's going on here? Yes, I was trying to put together what could possibly be happening behind me. Scream, a scream. I think there are a couple witnesses that said they heard some noise. Yes, uh, when we fell. Is it impossible you, you let out a noise upon being hit? I think it's impossible that I let out a noise upon being hit because it was a very slow move. It wasn't an impact. The impact came when we fell on the ground. So it's very possible that when the impact was made, I screamed. But I do not recall making a sound until we were 
falling or on the ground. Okay. Uh, so a collision, when I think of two skiers hitting each other, I, I think of a hit mm -hmm. and then a sort of separation <clears throat> between the two. Uh, yes. Is that what happened with you? No, this was very strange. It was a slow in between my skis with his skis and then like one 1,000, two 1,000 ish, and then a fall. The defense has prepared an animation exhibit that will be shown next week. Have you personally reviewed that? I have. And does it uh, accurately state what you believe has uh, occurred that day? Yes. Now it's not precise in the sense that it's not actual video of the event, right? right. Um, but it, it does a good job of sort of setting the stage yes. and animating what occurred. There needs to be some clarification as to what part of the animation he's referring to. Uh, agreed. It's uh, sustained as to vagueness and sure. re therefore relevance. Sure. Are, are, uh, have you seen the animations? I have. All right. Not everyone, not every witness saw everything. Fair to say? Fair. All right. For instance, you didn't see anyone in front of you, but you felt someone behind you? Yes. So you wouldn't possibly know, for instance, where Sanderson was coming from? No, he was behind me. I'm trying to satisfy Pardon the pr prior. Sustained? I'm Sustained? Sustained. Sustained. Does the animation uh, fairly represent your story? It does. One thing Craig Ramon uh, said is that Mr. Sanderson was out cold for two or more minutes. Do you recall that testimony? To be honest, he's said so many different minutes so many times I don't recall exactly. All right. Assume that he said minutes. That okay. he was literally unconscious for minutes. Did you observe that? That Mr. Sanderson was unconscious for minutes? Yes. No, he or, was not. Or unconscious at all? I don't know. Based on what I've heard from the doctors, you can be unconscious for a split second, so it's possible he was for a split second. So, where were you, where were you as you go down the hill? On the right side of Bandana. Was there a reason you were there? I just tend to try to, especially on a crowded run, I was trying to ski, you know, a little bit to the side and make turns. Are you in a, were you being an aggressive skier? Like, I'm going to go no, as fast as I can to get this down. is a green run with lots of families. Absolutely not. It's a green run, but it's not a bunny run, right? It, it, it actually, I mean, it's one of your favorite runs? It was one of my kids' favorite ones. They were learning. Gotcha. Because it comes down quite a ways. It, it does. It's a nice long run. And was this toward the top, do you recall? It was toward the top, but not at the top, if that makes sense. Would you have observed, first of all, did you personally look and see Mr. Sanderson? On the ground? After the event? Yes. And was he unconscious when you saw him? No. Then they're saying Eric Christi Christensen, the Deer Valley person, came mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Did you observe that? I did. And um, they're saying that he yelled uh, aggressively toward um, Mr. Sanderson. Did you observe that? He did not yell at Mr. Sanderson, no. He's going to testify on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, from your interactions with Mr. Christensen, is that consistent with his personality to be aggressive like that? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for character evidence. Sustained. How many times before had you interacted with Mr. Christensen? Well, it's a while back now, but I know that we had had him teach my son Moses on at least one other occasion. 
he was always incredibly kind, very patient. My son was a beginner and frustrated that he couldn't ski better faster, and Mr. Christensen was incredibly patient and sweet with him. He's a high school art teacher, I guess, on the side, or yes. one of the other. He makes pottery. Uh, there was an early comment about a hit and run. Did you hit and run? Absolutely not. And Deer Valley was dismissed on that. Uh, it was a prior party and was dismissed. Do you recall that? That's correct. I think there was an allegation that Eric Christiansen, Christensen uh did some funny business with the paperwork to protect you, his paying client. Objection, uh, Your Honor, relevance? Sustained. Did you uh, expect Eric Christensen to falsify his paperwork? Of course not. Agent and representative in the legal world, I can tell you, is a little different maybe <laughs> than in the acting world. Right. Um, this idea that I, ex that when Eric told me to leave, mm -hmm. I felt okay to leave. Yes. Um, uh, just comment on that. Was that a cover up? No, certainly. Your Honor, relevance? Sustained. Was Eric Christensen your legal representative on the mountain? Objection mm. relevance? Um, overruled on that. Go ahead. No, he was not. Did you stick around for a while after the collision? I did indeed. Going back to the one dollar, Eric Christians, you had paid Eric Christensen to take uh, to uh, teach your son how to ski that day for the full day. True. Yes. And uh, was his attention diverted as a result of your collision? Yes, for a while. And that one dollar of uh, damages does that uh, also take into account that fact? I haven't quantified, if you break it out, what a Deer Valley ski instructor makes per hour, but I think it's more than one dollar. The comment was uh, the word symbolic was used, but did you in fact lose one dollar or more as a result of the collision? I did. Uh, did, did you hurt yourself? I'm sorry. Did Mr. Sanderson hurt you by hitting you? He did. And Please explain. Well, when we fell over, my right knee felt like it had been overstretched and my back hurt. All right. And uh, you got a massage but did not seek medical care. Is that what I understood? I did not. Eric Christian, Christensen's going to testify on Monday. He's going to say words to the effect that he heard and turned. Mm -hmm. um, Ramon similarly said that, didn't he? I believe he did. He wasn't focused just on Terry right before the incident. He heard and turned and saw them go, a group go down, correct? That's what he said. Sustained. Uh, we'll let the jury remember then. Question. Yeah, the, the question, the answer, and the comment afterward are stricken. You should disregard. Moses and Apple are coming, and Brad on Monday morning. They are. Missing school to do it. Apple will be missing school, uh, unfortunately, and Moses will be on spring break, so he will not be. 
you've heard uh, next week we will hear from our experts, but uh, do they 100% support your version of what occurred? Yes. And I said your version of what occurred, but I do mean to say what occurred. You know what occurred, right? I absolutely do. I was there. When they say, uh, did anyone witness this, and Mr. Sanderson doesn't really remember things, you remember things, don't you? I do. Sustained? Were you knocked out? I was not knocked out, no. Do you have memory loss uh, of the event? I do not. I mean, it was a long time ago, but... <laughs> That's fair. Uh, one moment, please. up a Deer Valley receipt that actually shows uh, the amount paid. Um, and Any objection to this exhibit? Was it which number is it? Defendant's 85. Any objection? No objection. The defendant's exhibit 85 is received. address if we needed to but it turns out we don't need to so there's been no objection and James would you bring that up there's an address there maybe enlarge the so d85 move for admission if we haven't and then is this your actual receipt from Deer Valley yes and it's it's in that binder in front of you if you need to okay. look at it what number is yes it? let me come here I see. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. I can see it. Uh, the tab between the four of you for a couple, four kids, couple days, nearly nine grand, eh? That's what they charge. I think, again, there's this assertion that uh, because you were paying Eric Christensen, you expected him to lie for you. Objection. Do Please characterize as questioning, insinuations, or evidence. O overruled the jury will recall the evidence, or the questioning and the answers before. All right. Does that mean I, I don't? You can answer. Ah. So... Did you expect Eric Christian Christensen to lie for you? Absolutely because, because not. You, but he was on your payroll, wasn't he? But this is what Deer Valley charges. So anytime you, you go and you ask for a private instructor, that's the fee, unfortunately. Okay, and we'll let Eric uh, talk about this on Monday. Okay. Those are all of my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Van Orman? I will be quick, and I promise that that actually will stay the case. If I can find my glasses. All right. Just to follow up on a couple things you were just asked about, um, you were shown the text message, I think that's on that board there. Yes. And counsel had asked you, that text message was made before there were any lawsuits going on, right? It was. Okay. So are you aware that Mr. Ramon reported to the ski patrol that you hit Terry in the back about 10 minutes after the crash? I don't understand the question. That seems like it's not in evidence. Are you aware that Mr. Ramon, about 10 minutes after the accident, reported to ski patrol that you struck Mr. Sanderson in the back? I don't think so. Okay. 
if that report was made that w 10 minutes after the crash, that was long before a lawsuit was even contemplated as well, isn't it? Yes. Okay. You mentioned about keeping a low profile. You like to keep a low profile. When skiing. When you're skiing, correct. Um, does screaming at the top of your lungs profanities at Mr. Sanderson when he's on the ground keeping a low profile? After an incident like that where you feel hurt and violated, unfortunately, adrenaline can take over and emotion as well. Okay. Um, and counsel had asked you about touching you without your permission. I just want to make clear as we, well, we didn't do the little uh, dance. Dance. Thank you. Yeah, the little dance. Um, but w when I tried to reenact it with myself, which is, I'm sure I'll get crap for that later from my children, um, it was the front of his body mm -hmm. that you believe touched you, right? Yes. Not his arms, not his hands. Correct. Okay. And when you guys fell to the ground, you landed on him. He did not land on you. That's right. Okay. All right. Um, you screamed when you fell? The, what I remember, the first time I remember yelling was at Mr. Sanderson after the accident, but it's possible that I could have yelled when we were falling. Okay. And then you've described and you kind of put with your fingers uh, how Mr. Sanderson's skis went in between yours. Do you have any explanation how somebody if you're moving, because you were moving, right? Yes. He's moving. Yep. How somebody could, I'm just going to call it thread the needle, stick. How can somebody, as they're moving down this hill, have the ability to put their skis in between yours when they're like 18 inches apart? I don't know, but that's what happened. Okay. Um, you testified that this was a crowded run? It was... There were people on the run. Okay, but you've just said when I asked you questions earlier, nobody was in front of you. Nobody was directly in front of me, no. Okay. Were there people in your vision in front of you? There were people on the run. Okay. It was crowded. It was, I don't think I, I think it was moderately crowded on that day. Okay. And some of the people were your daughter and Carrie Oaks down below and your son and Eric Christensen to the left and up a little bit. I believe so. Okay. Um, and you've mentioned that Mr. Christensen was kind and patient with your son. He was. Okay. Very much so. All right. Um, you did pay him a lot and tip him well. I paid Deer Valley Resort. I don't know what the resort pays their instructors, okay. so that would be a question for them. Did you Do you tip Mr. Christensen well? I hope so. Okay. I, I, me too. <laughs> Um, but I would hope also if you're going to use this, in, you'd had him as an instructor before, right? Yes. Okay, you would expect him to be kind and patient with your son. Well, he was kind and patient the first time, which is why we asked to have him again. Okay, great. Um, you said that you stuck around, mm -hmm. but while you stuck around, you never asked Mr. Sanderson if he was okay. Correct, because he had hit me, and I was very upset. All right. You still didn't think it would be appropriate to ask somebody if they're all right? Mr. Christensen asked if he was okay, and he said he was. Meaning? Meaning Mr. Sanderson. I think you said that he mumbled it. He said, I'm okay. Okay. Uh, You've been asked a, a number of questions about um, the dollar. Mm -hmm. You were asked in your deposition, were you not, to your understanding, you're making a claim for the sum of one dollar as a symbolic law, right? Yes. And you said, correct. Yes? That's right. Okay. And then I also asked you in your deposition, are you telling me now you're making a claim for more? sum of a dollar. Do you remember what your response was? I don't remember. You said no. That's not the case though, is it? Your Honor, this is it's a yes or no. Move to, that's an improper question. She gave the answer. Overruled. It's a yes or no. Are you making a claim 
more than a dollar in this case? Now I am, yes. Thank you. No other questions. between now and when I took your deposition in 2020. What do you mean? Well, in 2020, you said, no, I'm not. Now you said, now you are. What's changed? Well, you're making the, so for me, as I said, there's a delineation between the $1 that I would receive and the lawyer's fees being reimbursed, which is not to me. No, I am. You're not changing your position. No. Okay. So you've always been seeking more than a dollar. At the time of the deposition, I was seeking a dollar for myself. And I don't recall at the time of the deposition if we were also asking for the reimbursement. I'll represent to you that that was pled in the counterclaim. I could show you a copy if you'd like. I'm you could. Do you, do you disagree with that? Do I disagree with? That in the counterclaim, my client and how I got involved on this case yes. that you had asked for a dollar plus attorney's fees. I am asking for reimbursement fees or that they're being paid. Not from day one since you filed the counterclaim against Mr. Sanderson. Yes. Thank you. We're going to pull up. Um P3, which I think has been admitted, it's the Deer Valley uh, report by Eric Christensen. And uh, for Gwena, do you know what the PIN number is? <clears throat> Sorry, Gwena, what's the PIN number? Uh, I'm going to just show you D3 here. Okay. you see this on the first day of testimony uh, and James maybe do the top third this is Chris Christensen's report yes it says a uh, male skier took her out from behind is yes. that what happened yes this report is accurate very I didn't see it but heard her scream as she went down. Do you dispute that? I don't. I skied directly to her. Did he do that? He did, yes. The man was behind her. Both were in discomfort. Is that all true? Yes. During lunch, she talked of being stiff and sore. Is that a true statement? It is. Can we go to the second, third now, please? I'm glad you can see it on your monitor. We had a hard time getting those going. All right, I'm going to look here. It says on the right there, a patroller came by to check on everyone. Do you have a memory of that? I don't, All right. I'm afraid. And then the bottom third, please. Uh, Your Honor, I'm addressing this because she, she was asked additional questions about sort of where, who, who hit to. First thing male skier stated was that she, meaning you, mm -hmm. appeared right in front of him. All right. Did you hear that? No. Uh, do you dispute it occurred? No thus admitting he was the uphill skier. He was. Uh, 
she never saw him because he came in from behind. Correct. Did you see Mr. Sanderson in front of you? No, he was behind me. Did you have a lash in your eye or otherwise have some eyesight problem? Nope, I still have 2020. I need reading glasses though. Were, were you blind in one eye and limited in the other? No. All right. I think there's a reference here that given your height and Mr. Sanderson uh, less height, mm -hmm. less being less tall, that somehow you <laughs> couldn't have felt him against your back. Can you just comment on that? Well, he was uphill of me, so he was higher than me, and he pressed whatever of his body against my back when his skis slid between mine. Were you standing still when the skis came between you? No, I was gently skiing, and he kind of gently skied right into me. Does that mean Mr. Sanderson was going faster than you were going? No, it wasn't an impact. Okay, well... Until to, we hit the ground. To come up upon you. Yes. I guess he had to have been skiing a little faster than you. Fair? I don't know because he was behind me, so I don't know what he was doing. All right. Ramon said that Sanderson had his head downhill, spread eagle, out cold. Did you observe that? No. Was his head downhill? Objection goes beyond the scope. I think you're going beyond the scope. Uh, Your Honor, she was asked about, uh, I'll move on, but she was asking about where people were. She did ask where people landed in her redirect or recross, so you, you can go into that. Thanks. So you heard Ramon say spread eagle, head down, right? I did. Out cold. Yeah. Do you think you would have noticed if he had been spread eagle? Uh, first, just comment on that, yes or no? Objection Sustained. Just comment, like, I did see him uh, spread eagle, or he did not. I, I'm, I'm trying to be as broad as I can on that. Well, that's, that's leading. Okay. Hmm. It is? <laughs> that is true. Was your head, when you came to arrest, downhill? We, both of our heads were in the same direction, uphill. So, Ramon said they were both downhill. That is incorrect. I, the ski, the, the expert today even said it was impossible for him to get lift off. And so that's just not what happened. The comment was that you cursed at, at him. Um, why didn't you say, uh, pardon me, sir, I, I think you inadvertently ran into me. Why didn't you do that in a nice, calm manner? Again, I felt violated. I was upset. My, I was worried about my knee. My back hurt. It felt violating to have somebody press their body against my back. I was full of adrenaline. I was really upset, and I, I'm sorry that I cursed. I think Ramon said something like, someone gave him the stink eye. Your, your Coldplay buddy, who <laughs> wasn't your Coldplay buddy, but gave gave him the stink eye or something to that effect. I don't like remember a, a, that. A mean look. I uh, don't know who that would have been and I don't remember. Brad probably wasn't too happy that someone had hurt his wa his girlfriend. Is that beyond the scope. I'll let it go. Who hit who? Oh my gosh. I wanna what a waste of time. Sustain. Three words, Your Honor. We'll let it go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, cross. It's five o'clock. We're done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Members of the jury, um, let me just give you the uh, same instruction that I have given you a few times. So we're recessing now until 9 a.m. on Monday morning. And so you'll be on your uh, you'll be on your own over the weekend. Before we recess, I need to remind you of the following instruction. Please do not discuss this case with anyone including other jurors. Please do not attempt to learn anything about the case outside of the courtroom, including from other jurors. Please avoid radio, TV, internet, and newspaper reports on this case. 
Please keep an open mind throughout the presentation of the evidence, and please do not form or express an opinion on this case until such time as it is finally submitted to you for deliberations. And the final instruction is have a great weekend. Step down, and you can leave too. Yes.